Hey, so big news, OpenAI just launched ChatGPT, and if you haven't tried it already, you absolutely should. Go and sign up, it's absolutely free to use. But in this video, I'm gonna show you how it's going to impact SEO, and I'm gonna show you some real life examples of how ChatGPT compares to Google and why in many ways, it's actually better than Google. And so I'm super excited to show you all kinds of awesome examples. And so if you're excited about this video, like it right now and let's dive right in. Okay, so like I mentioned, ChatGPT is simply a language model for dialogue as it says here, which basically just means you can ask this AI any questions and it will give you a response, it will give you an answer. And basically what they've done is they crawled the internet and crawled all kinds of information to be able to have this large database where they can basically answer all kinds of questions. And so I'm gonna put this thing to the ultimate test in many ways and I'm gonna show you from an SEO perspective how this could change the game for us as far as what we do. And ultimately, this could really be a, a problem for Google. It is definitely a real competitor and a real opportunity for Google to either try to replicate or if they don't replicate, then something like this could easily put them out of business in many ways. So it is really, really something that you have to pay attention to. This is really no joke. So let me show you a few examples. Okay, so the way that chat GPT works is you just go in here and you enter a little query and then it gives you an answer. It's that simple. And it's much more than that though. It's not like Google where we go in here and we just type a query in and then we get a list of results and then that's it. What's different about this is we can type a query in and then we can follow up on that query. And so I'll show you in a second what that looks like to get more specific, but let's just start with a few examples. So I'm gonna show you a variety of keywords just to get a, a really nice blend of different things so we can really see how well this tool works against Google. And so let's start with some informational queries. So the first one is something as simple as what is inflation? Okay, so we, we type that into chat GPT and it gives us a, a good answer. This is exactly what it is. And this is, seems accurate, okay? So, and this is the one thing that is a little difficult with this is because this information that we get, we have to assume that it's true because it doesn't cite any sources. It doesn't say where it got this information from, right? So we just have to assume that the AI is correct, which is definitely not the case, right? It's not always gonna be correct, but it's actually the same case with Google. Uh, it, when we look at Google, we're assuming that all of these, these results are accurate, right? This We're just taking this at face value that this is all accurate information because it should be coming from qualified sources in some ways, but we know that's not always true because Google's not always accurate. So both of these tools have accuracy issues, but when we think about this, these informational queries, this is under the assumption that we're actually going to believe the information that's given to us from the AI, this, this is a way better situation than this because even when we ask this question, what is inflation? Well, first, we get hit with three ads. So I don't wanna click on ads. I'm not interested in the ad about what is inflation. I just wanna know what it is. So we do have this little panel over here that does kind of explain it, but really all this is is just scraped information from a bunch of web pages. Google's not actually answering this question. Now with chat GPT, it's giving us, it's actually giving us the answer and that's it. We're not, we don't have to dig through a bunch of URLs to figure out what the answer is. And so this is really crazy, to be honest, and this is something where Google, if they don't adopt this, it's gonna be a real problem for them. But from an SEO perspective, this is also gonna be a problem for us because creating informational content about kind of these generic topics, it, it's not gonna do a whole lot for us. The way that we can continue to be relevant is we have to create really nuanced value, really deep value at this point. We can't just do high level stuff because the AI can answer these questions. It's really not gonna be beneficial for you to create content like that any, from this point going forward. Now, just to show you an example of how to go deeper on this, take a look at this. I said, explain inflation in layman's terms, okay? So I wanted to say it in an even simpler way than what it did here. And as you can tell here, we'll actually zoom out a little bit from this one. You'll see, this is really, really awesome. And this is what makes this tool so much better than Google. And so what it did is it dumbed it down really easily. And now it's very easy for anyone to understand. I'm not gonna read through it, but you can tell here just by reading a couple sentences that it's much easier to understand. 
Now let's take a look at Google. I did the same exact thing, explain inflation in layman's terms. Now Google can't do anything like this. All it can do is show us results where someone like me has optimized it for those keywords, right? So if I, if I decide to create a blog post about explaining inflation in layman's terms, that's the title, then I could end up here and then Google could use my, my result to give that to the user. But very different than what's happening here. This is actually taking the prompt that we've given it and giving us a real example of, of what this is in layman's terms. And I, I don't know how Google's gonna be able to do anything about this. I don't know how it's gonna be able to compete with this because Google, all it's doing is just scraping the internet and giving you a bunch of links to go to, that's it. So in reality, I don't know how it's gonna match this unless somehow it creates a tool that's similar and it's able to answer these types of queries because the open AI is very, very different. It's dialogue based. And I'm gonna show you a few other examples where it takes us even further where basically make renders Google useless in many ways. So this is the first example, very informational in nature. Now let's go to another one here. How to screenshot on Mac. Okay, another interesting example, this gets tons of search volume, and we'll look at what OpenAI gives us, okay? Gives us the, the steps, and these are accurate steps. You can go and fact check these steps. They're very accurate. So gives us exactly what we need. I don't need to do a bunch of research to figure it out. I don't have to get someone's opinion. I just get the facts. I get exactly what I need to get to answer this query. Once again, I would prefer this over this. Now, going back here, then I even decided to take it up another notch. And now this is where we're gonna start to see some cracks in the foundation of OpenAI at this point. It's not perfect by any means. There's a lot of things that are wrong, but here's an example. I decided to take the query even further. I said, can you give a visual representation of where command is on the keyboard? So I wanted to, I wanted to see if it could tell me like as if I'm just totally ignorant of how to use a keyboard, where this is on the actual keyboard. So it actually does explain it really well, but obviously, you know, it didn't, it wasn't able to supply an image or a graphic showing me where to actually do it, but it did explain it really well. Now here's where it gets interesting. I took that same exact question, did it on Google, and look what we find. It's horrible, like horrible results compared to this. Like this is amazing because it just shows you, I mean, the funny part about it is that the query is specifically for Apple, right? Because command, there is no command other than Apple. Apple's the only keyboard that has the command function, as far as I know, but it shows uh, you know, keyboard shortcuts in Windows. So even if we go to this first example, let's say we wanna do some additional research, what is this? This is, this is nothing about what I, what I asked, right? So totally wrong, totally inaccurate. And once again, OpenAI is even better. Even without the visual representation, it was still better, okay? So let's keep going through here. Another one, how to get rid of fruit flies. Google does a fine job of this displaying results that talk about it, okay? That's what Google's good at. But we look at this, you know, it, it gives us some solid, solid advice about how to get rid of fruit flies. I don't have to do any additional research because it's already found all of the ways to, to take care of this. And if I wanted, I could dig even further and maybe even get more ideas, but I didn't, I didn't follow up this query any further. So once again, you know, this is under the assumption we're gonna trust this information, but we're also assuming that this information is accurate, okay? So the same trust is required for both, so I'd rather take this one that just gives me the answer straight up. So me personally, okay? So now we're gonna get into some interesting ones. So the next one is I wanted to see a why query. So why is Russia invading Ukraine? Okay, that's just a general why query about a current event. Now this is where OpenAI doesn't do super well, okay? Any stuff that's current is not gonna do super well at this point, okay? Eventually, it's certainly possible that OpenAI could do this. I just don't know if, I don't know when, I don't know how, but at this point they can't do it, okay? Because basically they said their training only goes to 2021 and they can't really comment on current events. So this is another weakness in here. This is why it's not gonna replace Google tomorrow. Uh, there's still a lot of things that have to happen, but it, in some ways it can replace Google in small little areas and small little pockets. So this is one where Google certainly wins. Now let's go to another one. Why is the sky blue, okay? Once again, 
you know, we're, we're comparing, we're comparing these two examples here. They're pretty good. Both of them, you can't go wrong with either, but once again, I'm going to go probably with the open AI because I don't have to do a bunch of research. I can get a quick answer and I could, if I wanted to, I could go deeper into this topic and force the AI to give me even deeper information if I needed it. Now, this is the reason why Google's flawed is because people like me know Google's algorithm and we know how to manipulate the algorithm. And one of the ways that we manipulate the algorithm is we supply an ungodly amount of information around any topic, usually more than what's even necessary. And we're doing that to juice our content and, and make the content more fluffy to satisfy Google's algorithms. And this is why you don't see a lot of content ranking that's 50 words, right? It just doesn't really happen unless a site has a massive amount of authority. But in most cases, you're not gonna find a lot of informational queries with content that's 100 or 200 words. It just doesn't happen. And that's because Google really relies on tons of content to be able to understand these pages better, which then it prioritizes content that's deeper in some ways. Now, deep is relative. I'm just talking pure word count. But the problem with that is that all of these publishers go way overboard and they can't just give, they can't practice brevity. They can't give you a succinct answer to a question. The AI can. And with the AI, you can get that short answer that you need. If you wanna go deeper, you can, right? You can follow that up and I'll show you what, how to do that in a second. Now, next one is Facebook down. This is another one where the AI doesn't do well, okay? But, but Google does do well because it can just pull on other websites that do this. But once again, AI is not gonna be able to do this at this point. This particular chat GPT can't do it. Another one here that's informational in nature, has informational intent. Once again, we get a quick answer here. Uh, it does not contain gluten. And this one says it is naturally gluten-free, but it goes a little bit deeper into this, into this explanation as well. Once again, very, it does not need a long answer, okay? But if we go and look at this, I would imagine that this one that's ranking and this one, we'll look at these top results. We're gonna, it's gonna be super long, okay? Like, why does it need to be this long? It was a very simple question. Is quinoa gluten-free? This is the answer right here. Just that's it. But imagine if you tried to rank just with this. You would never work. It just wouldn't work. Google would never rank a page that is just one sentence like this for anything that has relatively decent competition. And this is the problem with, with the, uh, the SEO industry at this point is that we will just create content because it just needs to be long to make Google's algorithms happy. And we're not creating it because it's just the right thing to do. And in this case, this is, this is why this approach here is, is gonna be outdated in the near future. So next one here, one question, uh, when questions for kids. Now this is where OpenAI and ChatGPT really starts to shine. Look at this. Here are some one questions that you can ask kids. And right away, it gives us a whole list of awesome. And I could have even gone further. I could have actually said uh, 20 questions or 50 questions or 100 questions. And it would have given me, it would have given me a ton, as many as it possibly could. So this is another great example of why this works so incredibly well relative to Google. We'll look at this one. I'm gonna have to go into a bunch of these and try to pull them all out. I'm gonna have to look across three or four different URLs. I just want the answer. Just give me the answer, as many as, as, many as I need. I could have said 47, I could have said you know, 13. It would have given me that, okay? That's the beauty of this tool. Uh, now we're gonna do some comparison queries. So we did a lot of informational queries, now let's do some co comparison queries. So this is where things get really, really interesting. And this is where, I don't know what Google's gonna do. I mean, it's gonna be hard for Google to, to do this at this point, uh, what I'm about to show you. So this one I did here is QLED versus OLED. This is just the different types of TVs. I wanted to see a comparison query, how it would react. And overall, it gives a really good explanation of what is. I could have forced it to, to simplify the explanation. It was a little complex. But once again here, uh, Google does a nice job just scraping another page and putting the answer up here, okay? It's the same outcome, basically. But what's interesting here is this next query. This is what makes the chat GPT so interesting. You can follow up this previous query without having any modifier 
and it will understand what you're asking. It will understand that this is in reference to this right here, the previous query. So I don't have to put which is better, QLED or versus OLED. It already knows. It already knows that that's what it's about. So I just completely eliminated that query, and now it's conversational in nature. I can keep expanding on this even deeper and deeper, and I don't need to go back to this original topic. I can just expand and use natural language to get more answers that I'm looking for. Okay, and this is what makes us so different than Google and, and so much better, like just way better. So you have to mess around with this technology because it's gonna change the way we're doing SEO. Like there's just no doubt about it. And it's, I think it's an important reminder that SEO is not Google, okay? SEO is just search engine optimization. We're optimizing for algorithms, okay? And so it's important that, that we know that distinction. Google is the dominant force right now, will always be the dominant force, I don't know. But I'm telling you, this is gonna cause problems for Google and it's gonna make SEO very different. Uh, but this is, this is the most mind-blowing part, in my opinion. So if we look at this and we try to replicate this on Google, we can go right here and we can do which, we'll try to you know, make it happen. And of course, we can add the query to it, but watch this. If I just do which is better, watch that. And, it, and Google is actually good at this, believe it or not. Google can actually, with AI, it can, it can still make it relevant, okay? And so you, because we know how to use Google, most people will just click on this, but let's just say we didn't know how to use Google and I just went like this. Well, what just happened? Now we're complete, Google cannot string those things together. It, it can't, it can't string them together. It can only base give you a suggestion that that's relevant. It's trying to, it's trying to probe to see if it's relevant. I didn't have to give anything here. It knew that this was relevant. It knew the next logical progression in this conversation was still about the same topic. And that's what makes us so different. Google can't do this. It just can't. It, it tries, but it can't do it in the way that this chat GPT can do it. The next one here is that we, we wanna look at more transactional queries. And this is another one where Chat GPT just does not do well. Okay, so I, I tried to do this one. Please review Sony A90J OLED TV. Uh, it was <laughs> it was having some problems. There was errors, uh, too many requests. Like I was I was hitting it up a little too hard. But then we'll go back up here, and I did it again on a separate window. And it it can't give you a review of a specific product, but it can give you a general idea of what that product is about and give you some features or benefits of it. But it's not gonna do this super well at this point. So transactional queries, it, we're not, it's nowhere near where it needs to be. And in fact, I don't know how it, they would even do that because most reviews are very subjective in nature. They're usually someone you know, giving their opinion about this particular product, right? Even though they'll try to do objective analysis, it's always gonna be subjective because we're using our eyes in this example to look at two different TVs. So you could say, oh, well, with my eyes, it's deeper or this, but you're still, it's still subjective because humans are subjective. So this is one kind of weird area is these kind of bottom of the funnel keywords where it's gonna be tough uh, for the, the chat GPT to handle it. So next one is like best TVs, another in investigative intent type of query. You look at this, uh, once again, doesn't have the ability to really come up with anything legitimate relative to what Google can do at this point, okay? So uh, another one here, best computer chair, same example, okay? They, they can talk about the computer chairs, they can talk about what a good computer, computer chair looks like, but it can't give you specific product recommendations, all right? So now let's keep going here. Now we're gonna look at Ahrefs for SEMrush. This is your classic comparison query that's towards the bottom of the funnel. This is beyond the investigative phase because they're already brand aware and it'd be, the searcher would basically be trying to figure out like, should they invest in Ahrefs or should they invest in SEMrush? This is where things get pretty interesting. So the first one here, it gives, it gives a very kind of generic answer to this. It doesn't really explain, so I had to dig a little bit deeper. This conversation, okay, so which is better, all right? so. Once again, gives a pretty good answer. It tries to stay very neutral. Doesn't try to give. It doesn't try to lean one way or another. It tries to stay pretty neutral in that way. So you got to keep digging. So I did another query. Explain the pros and the cons of each. Now look at that. This is we're already. This is the third query in this string, and it still understands the connection. So then it gives me a really solid answer here that explain. It does objectively give the the pros and the cons of these tools. 
So it did a very, very nice job. So very cool. And once again, you can't really do that with, with Google, okay? Ahrefs and SEMrush, okay, so we'll do the same exact string of things. Ahrefs or SEMrush, and then we can do which is better, okay? We can do that, or we can do it like this, which is better, okay? And Google, once again, can recommend it based on, your, on the query that you just gave without refreshing this page, okay? But if you were to refresh this page, it's not gonna do anything. But I'm gonna do this again just to prove the point, which is better, Google can't do anything. You, it just can't do what this is doing here. Now, we'll do it again. I'm just take, take it further. I'm gonna go the same exact string of queries, and here we go. It's totally off, okay? It can't, it can't do what we're doing here. So just another great example. Okay, this is where the chat GPT, I guess if we're, if we're not putting it in the same category as Google, it's not a search engine per se, it's a different, it's a different animal altogether. Well, it's not exactly, like what I'm doing here is not an apples to apples comparison because this is just, it's a different beast. But this is what makes this thing it really starting to blow my mind, honestly, is you can, you can give what I'm calling these action queries. This is an action query. So you give it an action query and it actually produces something of real value for you. And Google can't do that. Google's just a search engine. Don't make it more than what it is. It's just a search engine. But I wanted to show you the example. So I told this one, this is actually a funny story. When I was in high school, I took a computer science class. And in that class, we spent months and months creating a dancing Santa Claus using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And that was hard back then. I had no clue what I was doing. And it was hard. Uh, now, if I had these tools back then, all I had to do is just go right in here and I could get the answer. And so right away you can tell, it gives me the HTML, it gives me the CSS, and it even gives me some additional guidance on how to make it really happen, okay? Now, is this 100% accurate? I'm not a coder, so I can't tell you. You know, you can go and copy this code if you want and see if it actually works. I tested this already just with the GIF version and it worked perfectly fine, but once again, this is incredible. Even if it isn't 100% accurate, even if it's 95% accurate and you gotta make some slight adjustments, like it just did all this work for you. Like you don't have to do the work. It literally just showed you the exact blueprint to follow. And this is incredible. Like, especially if you're not a coder, like if, let's say you have no experience with code, but you need to, you know, overnight come up with, you know, your boss tells you, I, you have to go put a dancing Santa Claus on our website. You're like, okay, I'll try to figure it out. You can of course go to Google and you could watch a bunch of YouTube videos and try to figure it out that way. And you spend 30, 40 minutes watching videos to hopefully get to a point uh, where you actually get the help that you need, or you just go right in here and it gives you exact formula that you need to do it, okay? So pretty incredible, like really incredible. Uh, and then another example here, this is just coding. We can do, it can even give us ideas. So write 10 controversial tweets about SEO in the style of Gary Vaynerchuk, okay? And you know, it's just funny, like these, this is kind of similar to how Gary Vee would sound. SEO is dead, long live content marketing, right? Like it'd be something super controversial. Uh, and this stuff, th this is amazing, okay? And I, I had this prediction uh, well over a year ago that I knew that eventually with AI, we could pick a personality or pick someone's writing style or pick someone's uh, dialect or whatever it is, and we could, we could make the AI create content in that manner. And so this one I use Gary Vaynerchuk, but then I did another one here, which is write direct response copy to sell an SEO course in the style of David Ogilvy. And so it wrote an entire little direct response copy just to sell a course, just like that. And it's pretty good. It's, it's honestly not bad. And the beauty of this is that this is just one query I gave it. I can follow up. Like I can follow up with this and be like, okay, well, make it more personal or make it more controversial or I can, I can tweak it and make it different. Uh, to, to get it to where I want it to go, okay? So you're not just done after this one query, you continually refine it and, and use the AI to make it, to form it into what you're actually looking for. It's pretty wild, honestly. Uh, and then another one here is answering Haro queries. So you can take a Haro query, you can dump it in here, and it's gonna, it's gonna answer the Haro query for you. And so in this one, the uh, prompt was, 
what advice would you give prospective home buyers seeking to purchase a home without making a down payment, okay? And it gives a solid, decent answer, okay? And if you're trying to, if you're trying to respond to horror requests at scale, and you're, you're giving out pretty solid answers, like, how could you not want to do this? I mean, this is just like, this, as long as it's on brand, you maybe modify it a little bit, but like this just saved you so much thought and so much work. If it takes you 30 minutes to write a response, this took 30 seconds, okay? It's a no-brainer. It's an absolute no-brainer. So the point is, is that, you know, look at Google. It can't do anything like what this can do, okay? It just can't. And once again, that's not the purpose of Google. Google is a search engine. It will continue to function that way but this is a different animal altogether and you need to mess around with it. You need to play around with it because this is gonna change everything that we're doing and it can make your life way easier. Like this is, like this isn't, a, we, don't be afraid of the technology. Use the technology. Become someone who's a, a master of the machine, okay? That's what we need to figure out is how can we use this to make our jobs easier? How can we do this, use this to be more effective and ultimately, how can we stay ahead of the curve, right? Yeah, nerds like me who are obsessed with tech and obsessed with AI and all this stuff online, like, yeah, we're super pumped up about this, but the reality is like, most people have no clue about this. Like, most of the world has no idea what this is, okay? Most people continue to use Google, go on with their daily lives, they don't care. But for us, we need to stay ahead of the curve, okay? And this is, a game changer. And this is just GPT 3.5. GPT 4 is coming soon and it's going to be like a hundred or a thousand times more powerful than this. Okay. So, and this is, this we're talking in like the next year. Just imagine, just imagine in three years, imagine in five, imagine 10 years where we're going to be. This stuff is going to change everything that we're doing. So as you can tell, I'm pretty pumped up about it. I think it's freaking awesome. Uh, and I'm messing around with it a lot, and I'm gonna continue to look at it in the context of SEO, but also in the context of everything in business. Like, this is gonna make, make business much more efficient if for the people that are going to embrace this technology and not fear it. We must embrace it, it's gonna change things. So just jump on the wave or get left behind. It's that simple. So that's all I have for you today about ChatGPT and its uh, connections with SEO, and I'll continue to give you more updates as this tool advances or other tools advance. I have no loyalty to OpenAI in any way. I just love the AI opportunity that's happening right now. So if you got a lot of value from this video, please like it and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Okay, thank you so much for watching.